ayah which refers to the people of the book and also polytheists and they are somewhere in the middle of that ayah the majus what do you understand about them who is it referring to i mean exactly do you know which verse are you referring i can find it. I, I i don't have a good memory no yeah Let me find out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. If you're happy, I'm happy. Um, Surah Al Hajj. Seventeen, yeah. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at. Let's read out. And you know, I, I, as I just described it, yeah. these people are mentioned in this ayah, but yeah. it's unclear yeah. whether they are considered amongst the people of the book or whether they are considered amongst the disbelievers or the polytheists. And this is quite interesting because it corresponds, I believe, with a historical change in how these people were treated in terms of taxation in the Muslim world. But I'd be interested to know first of yeah, so understanding these, of who these they are. So these are a verse we need to understand in light of 262, chapter 2, verse 62, okay. which is in the Quran, which given further. Um, so let's look and how at... Do you know, how do you know it relates directly to 262? If you read it, and then you'll find out why. That's why, you know, I was confused which one you're talking about, Majus. There's plenty of verses, right? I got you. Yeah. Okay. So let me read out, yeah? Inshallah. 262? Yeah. So this is Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَ وَالصَّابِئِينَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Indeed, the believer, the j indeed, in the Amanu, so it's talking about initially the believers, the Muslims, yeah. and then the Jews, and the Christian, and the Sabians. And the Sabian are the indigenous group, basically. So it has some additional footnote that they live in Iraq. They, and yeah. whoever truly believes in Allah and the last day and does good will have their reward with their Lord, and there will be no fear, nor. So within that, within the group of them, those who will believe, so the idea is, it's not like a separate, okay, Jews are Jews, you know, within them, there no will, none of them will be believed. Like, in fact, in fact, there was a verse with Jesus. Those are with Jesus. They are the children of Israel, right? Bani Israel. They are, they are called Hawariyun, meaning the helper of Jesus Christ, the, the companion of Jesus Christ. They are also... By race, they are Jewish, but by the belief, are they Jewish? That's an interesting distinction we made. And that is in line with this 2 verses 62 cl clarified in Surah Al-Hajj, where it talks about. Now, let's go back to um, the initial point. There are many others actually mentioned. So, you, there are many other groups, like for example, Within the Nazarene, they are a believer yeah. as well. So I'm interested specifically yeah. in this one group. Okay. And so let's just let, what your yeah. understanding or what yeah. your knowledge of them is. So basically he is saying, now, now the verse exactly, the, the verse stylistic is exactly goes seem like that. So again, he start with, in the yeah. those who believe. So similar pattern. الَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالصَّوَابِئِينَ وَالنَّصَارَ وَالْمَجُوسَ So include another group now. Another group. Now, that verse doesn't say Majus, right. but it's talking about the other Jews and Christians. Yeah. Now, this verse is additionally just used Majus, وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا and those who are polytheists. So, another group has been added here. So, is it, this, is it making it... Uh, An extension. But is it distinguishing between those who believe in other than, who associate with Allah and the Majus? So, it, no, 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 no. Here it's saying, indeed, the believer, the Jews and Sabian, 
So, and the, and the Majus Zoroastrian. It's yeah. interesting why yeah. what, that they call it, the, the words that they use here. Are yeah, because this is how the understanding goes. For example, the the letter or the words has been used here, exactly very similar word to 262 and it goes to the context exactly. Right. Because firstly it was directing to the Jew, people of, uh, of the books. Now it has been included to the polytheist and the Majus, another group. Um, the word for... Okay. The Majus, yeah. But what I'm saying is first of all, is it, make, is it distinguishing between polytheists and Believer, yes. And Majus. No, 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 no. They were talking about, now we have believer in one group. What I'm saying is it, it refers to polytheists separately to Majus. No, they were in, so all of the group mentioning together. Yeah. Say for example, we have four stations together. And then this four station comparing with another station. Right. Let's say Kilburn against with four station. Right. So the four station within that, the sum of them within that, like as a race wise, let's say you are a race wise, I don't want to mention it on the camera. Let's say you are race wise, but your belief would be quite different. Say, for example, if I look at an Englishman, his race is English, but what is his religion? Islam. So there is a distinction between race and the religion. Right. So here is talking about, firstly, when he's talking about Jews and the Christian, he's mentioning, yes, these are the Jews and Christian. But what the message is talking about is, and the police says, Allah will judge between them all on the Day of judgment, surely Allah witness all over things. Meaning, why Allah is saying that? That is an interesting passage I'm going to refer. In between Prophet Muhammad and Jesus Christ, there is a long gap. And there was no messenger and prophet in between. And that time called Ahlul Fatara. Meaning, there was a gap basically. In this time, people try to find the way and some of them some of them like from our Sarah we found there are some people they are looking for Abrahamic faith and one of them they were looking for Abraham while uh, the idolatry has been prevailing in all over the Arabia and there are four people mentioned in our Sarah that one of them I can't recall of four I you know I'm not good at yeah, uh, through my memory. That's one of them is Prophet's wife's uncle. His name is Waraka. Mm -hmm. And he was someone, uh, they are called as Hunafa, meaning someone who was inclining towards monotheism, meaning following the Abraham's pathway. Mm -hmm. Right? So the distinction here, the, the within, even, even within the Arabia, these are the pagan Arabs. Within them, they also have believer. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Sabian, the Jews, the Christian, Quran is simply engaging with them. That, okay, these are the group of people, but if they believe, because the belief Quran used, Amana Billah, meaning you have to believe in Allah and Messenger, you, know, you have to fulfill the condition. Then you will understand that if someone follows that, he will be saved. So the basic yeah. your, your translation is slightly different to mine. Okay, can I like have yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yours gives some additional yeah. uh, explanations yeah. of what Majus is. Yeah. yeah. The Magian and those who associate with Allah. So basically, one of the Quran, Quran so tells us. That's what his translation says. Yeah. yeah. The Magian is a, a priest in the order. Which is, yeah, but it's, it's a member of the order of priests of Zoroastrianism. It doesn't, it hasn't, etymologically, has nothing to do with fire. So I'm interested to know why that, why these words appear like this. But I want to, I, I just want to point out. So your your translation says Zoroastrians, comma fire worshippers. Yeah, and that's the in brackets. Yeah. But by being oh, uh, well, no, it's politing is well, as in Ashraf, the one who did shirk. Yeah. But the one who did shirk. Yeah, is sure. fire worship shirk? Sorry. And is yes, fire yes, worship yeah. So why is it distinguishing between fire worshippers and polytheists? So or for those who associate with Allah. What what Allah is simply clarifying, what is worship? What is shirk and what is belief? So the we have def, uh, uh, we have a definition for belief and we have a definition for shirk. Okay. What is belief? Belief means I believe in oneness of Allah, believe in angels, believe in books, believe in the prophets, believe in the hereafter, 
believe in the predestiny. So once someone believe in the way the Quran and the Sunnah, the Hadith explained, this is called belief. Now, it doesn't just stop what is a belief. It also tells about what is shirk. Yes. Shirk is something you partner with God. Now, a Christian, I would say he is also doing shirk. How? Because he is making Jesus Christ equal to the God. Right. Same way, when you worship in something else beside God, it's also shirk. So, so when it on that angle... Nasara, is it referring to people who associate Jesus with God? Yeah, uh, Allah saying, there was a verse in the Quran, Allah said, those who Jesus is Allah, they surely committed disbelief. Means, they associate a partner with shirk. Yes. So when it says Nasara, is it referring also to those who commit shirk by worshipping Jesus? Nasara, I mean, Nasara is basically the Christian, it's referring to Christian. Yeah. When we define with the Christian, like I said, we need to make a distinction between who the Christian is. Yeah. And within the Christian, there are, let's say, like I said, there is a clear distinction we need to make. And the Englishman, when yeah. I say English. Sure, sure. Are you saying that this is a, an ethnic issue? No, I am saying, it, talking about a group of people, they will disbelieve. But right. Allah is mentioned, among them, those who believe. Because there will be some of them who followed the teachings of Jesus, correct, but didn't truly. take him as God. Correct. But you got it, yeah. What I'm saying is, mm. so then when it goes on to mention the Majus, and then separately it mentions those who associate partners with yeah. Allah, yeah. because the accusation when it says fire worshippers is that they are associating a partner, i.e. the fire, with God. So basically, anything, any worship you do, apart from not worshipping God, yeah. will be considered as shirk. That's the baseline of definition. Baseline definition. Makes, I, think, I think his point is, why are there different sections? Why don't we just include the them no, 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 amongst no. the polytheists? It's very simple. Or amongst the, a, a very simple. A Christian. A Christian is someone who is associating partner with God by using a human form. A Hindu, does he do the same? The object... Very similar idea, but they're using a cow. But here's my, here's now, my the question is, Allah, let's say, Allah is talking about, let's say, so Allah is talking about Christian and their disbelief, and Allah is talking about Hindu and their disbelief. So Allah is categorizing this group and their disbelief. Them, all of them, they're doing shirk. That's what Quran is but referring. you acknowledge that there are believers amongst Christians. Correct. So would you then also extend that to say there are believers against Majus? Or would you simply assume that Majus means those who worship fire? I mean, look, I do not know within that Majus people, is there any Muslim, meaning someone who believed in it. But Allah didn't tell us here. No, no, but it doesn't uh, say Muslim, it says believers. Okay, when it's a believer, yeah. what does a believer mean? Meaning someone is Muslim. Meaning, you know, if you look at Amana. No, because it, you, you wouldn't mention Jews and Christians. I'll tell you, I'll tell you if, what. If it meant Muslims, okay. right? I, I, I'll tell you one of the things here. Here, inna ladina amana. This is a very, very important point. For understanding the rest of the verse. Yeah, I don't understand it. Amanu meaning someone who believe in Allah. I believe in Allah. Now that belief explained in the Quran, in the Hadith. Now we have a famous Amanu, Hadith. Is that related to Iman? Iman, right. Okay. Those who believe. Yeah. Amanu come from Iman. Yes. But I mean linguistic. No, no, no. So for example, Iman, Iman consists of six things. Right? So we in have the word Amanu, is it related to Iman? Yes, of course. Yeah. So basically, it's talking about everyone. I mean, those who believe. Right. So those who is it's talking about everyone, those who believe. So that belief understanding must be in line with Islamic way, because that books yeah. using that term. So we need to understand the term in light of the book. Itself. See, uh, because when I think of of uh, terms like fire worshiper, worshiper being used for Zoroastrians, my understanding is that Zoroastrians believe in one creator and in that sense, at that time would they have been considered believers if their, if their uh, belief was that, they, that there is only one creator, because this idea that they worship fire is something which is a, an outside perspective which has been imposed on the word Majus, because for example in the biblical uh, text we have the Magush in the book of Matthew where it doesn't talk about fire, it doesn't talk about, it doesn't refer to them in any negative way per se. But it seems like the understanding amongst Arabic speakers or amongst the Muslim community yep. is that Majus is a synonym for fire worship. 
which no, th this linguistically is, doesn't, doesn't no, stack up. I mean, th this is an understanding, right? When Quran addressed those people, or, or just all those groups, Allah is talking about, for example, Allah is talking about that, uh, why do you uh, take Mary in a position where she is not belongs to, right? Mm -hmm. For example, things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you ask a group of Christian who was Unitarian, they will not believe in that. So it doesn't right. apply for them. Right. So Quran addressing a particular group, so each of the groups, Allah is addressing to them, and Allah is addressing to them, yes, they have digressed from the main belief, which is worshipping. Now, you might find, we do not have, do you have the history of Majus? Do you have the history of Majus and their belief? I don't know. Yeah. You have. Yeah. And um, what was the that? Oldest, like the oldest teachings, for example, are the uh, the hymns of Zarathustra. So we we know these people in the West as Zoroastrian, uh, and they are named after their founder um, or after whom uh, they take their teaching, uh, Zoroaster, as he was known by uh, in the West through the Greeks, or Zarathustra in his own teachings. Yeah. So we have his teachings or. Um, at least a collection of them, which are dated back to something like three and a half thousand years ago. They are attributed to him directly. So what's, the, what's the name? The Gathas of Zarathustra. Mm -hmm. And they appear in the wider um, scriptures, which are called the Avesta. But the part of the Avesta that is attributed to Zarathustra himself are called the Gathas. And they are dated to something like Aye, 1500 right. uh, BCE on linguistic grounds. They come to us in a language which is contemporary, if not older than the oldest form of Sanskrit, according to academia. So are you referring that they have somehow linked with the Indian gods? Because, you know, Sanskrit is mainly originated south, the language southwest. Of, the language, the Sanskrit language is related to Iranian languages. So these teachings come to us in an Iranian language from a time when um, Sanskrit and or the the Indian and Iranian people had not yet had not yet split or had very recently split. So the Iranian people became the Indo-Aryans and the Iranians. So the Indo-Aryans continued the Sanskrit tradition, whereas the Avestan language uh, is the one that was carried into the Iranian world. And so these teachings come to us in that very old language, and it's a now dead language. Yeah. So how does that worship works? So imagine if you say you believe in one God. Why, why the Quran is condemning? Like, how? What, what's your belief and what's your worship? So how he, do he says, Zarathustra says quite clearly there is one creator. However, fire became a, a prominent symbol, probably best described, uh, like in terms of like modern clerical thinking, as. Uh, so, the, do, you, the do, you, do, you, do you use as fire as an intermediary? No, the, the, the fire doesn't have any um, power per se. It's symbolic of. Um, like purity, it's symbolic of God's creative power, but it's not when when you interact, when you look at the fire, you don't say this is God. That's that's it just doesn't appear anywhere in his teaching. So, like for example, without giving the fire without like you know, fire I don't, being there. I think that this idea of a fire appearing in Zoroastrian uh, ritual is something maybe that was pre-Zoroastrian, which was re like grandfathered back into. Um, Zoroastrian culture, Zoroastrian um, ritual per se, mm -hmm. but Zarathustra never I, I, never I, tells anybody I, to pray in the presence of a fire. It just so happens that the word for fire is synonymous with an aspect of Zoroastrian uh, theology which represents cosmic order, but it's not God. God right. is his, so how, is his how, own I his have own I have a question like for example. I heard that you have a dual nature of God in Zoroastrianism, that one group of believe all the good things happening, that God is one God is responsible, and another God is responsible for all the bad things happening. Is that part of Zoroastrianism? I think there, I think there is a sect. Correct. That correct. Now, that. now, but that's now. Not, hold on, that, that's not the um, that's not the foundational belief. In fact, there is only one Creator, and the Creator is pure good, pure pure good pure righteousness my understanding is that evil is an emergent property of the material world there is no sense in zarathustra's teaching that evil is the antithesis of the god there is an aspect 
these are more conceptual ideas. So the evil force or evil being in Zoroastrianism is called Angra Menu. But Menu means mentality. It's not a being, it's not a person. It's a way of thinking, a, a, a type of mentality. And it is antithetical to the creative or righteous mentality. But neither of those two things is God. There is only one uh, so, creator who is, who is known by name as Ahura Mazda, uh -huh. uh, so Lord, we, Lord Wisdom. I'm glad that you explained the other sect of this. But when Quran is addressing, right? And I, I now find out what is happening here. Now, when Allah is talking about Christian, not all Christian are going to the hellfire. There are within the Christian, within the Sabians, within the polytheist groups, they some they are within people among them, they believe truly. Right. Believe truly, meaning believe in Allah and Messenger and all of these things. They will go to the but then you say that amongst the Majus that there are people. Now here we need to see what is the verse. Indeed the believers, the Jews, Savians, Christians, Zoroastrian fire worship. Okay. Let's Allah will judge between them. Now Allah made a very important distinction here. Who will judge? Allah. Why? Why is that? Because because there is no evident prophet at that time. There is no evident. What is I, I, I mentioned an earlier Ahlul Fatara, meanings in in between the prophets and messenger. Because in between Jesus Christ and Muhammad peace be upon him, there is a six gap of sin. Quran mentioned but the that. The Majus are before Jesus. Sorry, say again. The Majus are before Jesus. They're before all the other prophets. Maybe, maybe contemporary. But, with but Moses. it's not about talking about their existence. It's talking about who are there at contemporary time. At the moment like, of this revelation. Yes. Okay. So it's talking about a particular phenomenon, how those groups are believing what? Allah is saying all of them within the group, those who believe truly, they are saved. And within them, they are, so Allah is mentioning each of, those groups, each of them. But there can't be anybody in the, now, in for the example, group of now, now, within them, with Majus and Polytheists, Allah, what Allah is saying, Allah will judge between them. Meaning, the true account is with Allah, we do not know. And the Quran keep affirming, Alayhi sallahu bi ahkamil hakimin. Am I not the perfect judge? Meaning, Allah, Allah will make them accountable because Allah truly knows who has received the message. For example, do you think everyone in this universe received the message of Islam? No. No. Now, who will, how will they will be judged? Uh, my understanding is that one will only be judged if he has come in receipt of the message, yeah. right? Yes, correct. You're right. So Allah said, Wama no, 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 no. no, he's right. He's right. He's right. So he, he, no, 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 he said. He said. Something else he answered. Okay, sorry. If, I'm I'm repeat the question. He, you see, he said, you asked him that anyone, is there everyone in the world who has received the message? Of no, he said no. He's correct. He said no. Yes, yeah. correct. Then how will those people who have not received exactly this the is message, what how will they be judged? Exactly. Who have not received. Yeah. yeah. So Allah, his yeah. Allah said, okay. I will not punish a nation until I send a I will not punish a nation until I send a messenger to them. Right informer or someone who's informed so allah will we have many hadith allah talks about in the day of judgment they will question these people those who didn't receive message so and then allah will test them allah will command them to do something and if they obey then allah will put they will know through allah's divine knowledge that he will be doing the correct thing even if he is tested in this world so but your, what's your assumption based on this no uh, i'm not my assumption that's exactly sorry, what quran here sorry, based on this yeah. passage yeah. Is it, is it saying, referring to the, the Jews as people who have received the message, yes. but amongst whom there are disbelievers? Yes. So, for example, how do we know that within them they are receiving? For example, we're talking about um, Abdullah ibn Salam, one of the famous Jew who became Muslim. He was seeking that he knew there is a true prophet coming. And he looked at uh, the criteria of the prophets. And then he finally con convinced that Muhammad is indeed. And within them, many of the Jews, they become Muslim. So what does it show? It shows that they have an understanding of a prophet coming to Arabia. Of course, we can bring some of the verse from the Bible about Isaiah 42. But of course, this is a debated yeah. issue. Anyway, that's, that's going yeah, that's to be a whole night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, Quran actually talks about this group. And I'm interested to know why it puts these groups of people together in this one, one verse. 
Oh, is it, saying, is it saying amongst the poly, even the polytheists, we should not judge because Allah, Allah is the judge, is right? the one who understands yeah, yeah. that That's, even though they are polytheists, it's not just cut and dried. It's no, not clear. No, for example, if I say, how do we judge someone? We do look at the judge someone by looking their apparent action. Mm. If someone say I am disbeliever, okay, I take the face value. But I don't know what is in heart. Right. So the true judgment. And you don't know what message they've received. Correct. Received. Uh, absolutely. Right. So on that note, you and I can conclude, okay, on, on an apparent understanding, he is a disbeliever. But in the understanding of Allah is maybe different. Right. Maybe he's, he's lying because he has faith inside the heart. And of course, even one of the companions of, of Prophet, uh, I forgot his name, he been tortured. And, and they said, if you disbelieve, we'll let you go. And he wanted to survive himself, so he said, I disbelieve. Mm. Then he came to the Prophet. Allah revealed a verse mm. that Allah knows that you didn't disbelieve. Right. So Prophet assured him you didn't disbelieve. Right. He was concerned because his faith is inside. Now the question go back again, how Quran is addressing to each of them. Allah is talking about in order to judge something, you need to know inside, you need to know the ghayb, meaning what is unseen and what is apparent. Apparent thing can be different mm. to the inside things. Like for example, like on the hindsight we have munafiqun, meaning the hypocrites. Mm. They used to pray with Prophet. And Allah revealed that they say they are believers, they are not. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. No so, that's why, yeah, yeah, so, so, like, um, so those verses I would say, maybe go through with the understanding of it. Like, because you know, sometimes if you just read it on a plain surface, it may confuse. And I, I'm not gonna say because some Quran mentioned there are verses are clear, and the verses needs to be explained in light of the Quran. So if you let's say if you have like these verses, so sorry, sorry. you okay? Is everything okay? Yeah. yeah. So Quran just simply outlining that Quran given some rules of how to interpret Quran. And one of the uh, interpretation is Quran by the Quran. Meaning, let's for example, I'll give you an example. Like, Allah, the, uh, Allah mentioned a verse in the Quran. Allah said, yes, So Allah asked a question in the revelation. Basically, this was a trick question used, given to the pagan. The pagan, they wanted to stop Prophet Muhammad from preaching him. And they said, okay, give me a trick question. So that we can stop him. So out of, I think, three questions. As one of the questions is, ask him about Ruh. So when Allah heard it, they asked this question to the Prophet. So the reason for revelation is they're asking it. So it's not like Allah is sending, keep sending. No, there are some revelation came within the revelation is based on the question they asked. Right. right. So that's why. Calm down. Yes, Aluna Kaini Ruh. What is Ruh? Tell us what is Ruh. Then he waited for revelation and revelation came and then he said, Kuli Ruhu min Amri Rabbi. So that's a, a unique, I'm just bringing a unique type of how Quran address and how Quran comes as a response to the questions. Right. So, for example, those who are unclear about Ruh, what is Ruh? Then Allah mentioned it and then Allah said, Wama utitum min al -ilmi illa qalila. That knowledge was given very little to you guys on that. So if you say something about more about or speculate something, it is not known to you because it was not revealed to you. Because the nature of Ruh is unknown. I think shall we call it for a day? Yeah, why not? I was talking. Lovely talking to you. Oh, as always, honestly. I, I find joy when I talk to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I no, absolutely appreciate it. Because I, let's hope speakers are going to uh, replicate our way of talking. I hope civilized, civilized manner, yeah. absolutely, well, yeah. exactly. And share, sharing, sharing information. Of course, of course, of course, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is needed. No, of course, of course. And uh, look, enlightening us, and education is key, you know. We should, because look, some of the things he said, of course, the history, I have no clue. This is important to know. It's an area of yeah. knowledge. I've never heard of these things. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, we used to say, yeah, uh, they... Yeah, I, I feel I, I feel I, I'm driven to address these issues because, like you saw in my translation, it doesn't say anything about fire worship. But this is an assumption or a uh, like a no, no, the majus, no, the majus is this is the way 
the, they, they the, the, no, the, the understanding. Because yeah. the Quran is understanding of Prophet and how Prophet explained it. And from the Prophet's teaching, how the companion understood it. So Quran is not just they memorized the Quran. Yeah. They knew what is Quran actually talking about and which particular group. So you may say, oh, why Quran is talking? It's not applied to me, but it's not applied to you, it's applied to someone else. So that's the distinction. If I think, oh, Quran is talking to me, it's not matching with me. But Quran is not talking about you, Quran is talking about someone else. So that's the understanding. Because look, we have so many firqas, so many sects, different groups within the Christianity. So Allah is talking about uh, some of them, they saying, uh, Jesus is son. Allah saying, وَيُنْزُرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذُ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا Yeah, sorry. I, uh, uh, Allah warning those who take a son, uh, who say Allah is a son. So, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah, finish. There's one that's from God.